Good example, everyone. Welcome to Fourth International Conference on Vajrayana Buddhism. I am Yangchi Si Rinzin. As a part of conference, we are speaking to few speakers who presented their presentations. Here with me is Dr. Doji Wang Chu. Dr. Doji Wang Chu is the director of the Chokse and Experiential Learning Academy project. The project focuses on well-being, research, education, and training. He has PhD in communication from the University of Macau. He is also affiliated to the University of Macau. Good example, sir. Welcome. Thank you for um, having me here. Again. Based on the based on the ethnography field work from 2018 to 21, you have recently uh, found your paper actually has recently found uh, how the social media is being used to integrate local traditions language. Uh, social settings and ritual practices. And you t uh, in your presentation, you talk more about um, how WeChat, the most popular platform in Bhutan, has been ways to spread spiritual or the spiritual practices in Bhutan. So can we hear a little bit on this, or if you can uh, talk about on that? Okay, uh, so my study uh, looked at uh, what uh, unifies us as uh, people, as, uh, as a nation. Uh, or as a, as a, as a broad um, topic and um, very um, specifically I looked at uh, the interactions ha uh, people have on social uh, media such as WeChat and on Facebook uh, but right now for this paper I looked at uh, a WeChat group uh, from Tashi Yangtze, a community in Tetsu uh, uh, Geok and then um, to triangulate uh, the, the data and findings and the patterns uh, in that uh, WeChat interaction. I traveled extensively uh, to uh, different places um, in Bhutan. Uh, I, come, I, I did uh, the whole Paro Valley. Uh, I stayed uh, uh, for a very extended period in uh, Adaruka. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, a lot of my works also was based in the, out, of, out, out of Jemgang. So uh, what I found, or uh, what this study finds, is that um, the deities and the sacred places in Bhutan not only act as a, uh, as as a as a spiritual sanctuary for people to pursue uh, enlightenment and realization, but acts as a very important uh, social space uh, that brings people together, that uh, unifies us as 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 a nation and um, and gives uh, meaning to and purpose to our our lives uh, as individuals as well as uh, as, as a community uh, right now we just talked about the widget but i was thinking to ask about um, as as a social media as a social media or let's say where your findings talks about how the mobile phone came in and then how this mobile phone has now reached the rural uh, especially in terms of 3g and an internet and all so my uh, first question was like what do you mean when you say that phones or the social media is being integrated in ritual practices, specifically in the ritual practices? Okay, um, a very simple example. Um, a temple in, in uh, a community temple in uh, Tashi um, was having um, difficulties in uh, sustaining their uh, regular rituals because they cost money. Uh, and to conduct uh, the annual uh, tzechus and, and, uh, and uh, recitation of, of uh, kanjur and tenjur. And they have been doing that for, for centuries from since time uh, unknown. But in recent decades, uh, because of out-migration from these places, uh, they could not sustain or subsidize uh, these um, uh, activities. So what, uh, what WeChat has done is uh, that it has allowed uh, people or some uh, individuals from that community to create WeChat groups, add their uh, friends and family members, add uh, people who mm, they felt uh, would, uh, uh, to, uh, would assist them financially. And what, has, what comes out now is that many um, community temples around Bhutan, especially in Eastern Bhutan, uh, is that there is a revival of these uh, spiritual traditions and religious uh, rituals. So uh, typically uh, how uh, it happens is that if there is a um, religious activity planned for next month or, uh, or in the coming months, um, someone would initiate um, 
uh, this on a WeChat, announce it uh, to the group, saying that we are going to recite uh, the Kanjur um, following, uh, you know, following uh, in the following month. Uh, and if people could uh, come together and donate whatever they, they can. And people start donating using uh, MBOB or MPay. Uh, people deposit money into the accounts they provide. And um, just as we are speaking uh, right now, we are um, helping one uh, temple in, uh, uh, in Kenny, in uh, Tashiansi, uh, to come up with the required funds to do their final or the last uh, Kanju recitation. They have been doing that for uh, many years, and they want to do the last one this year. So, uh, so when I say that uh, the WeChat uh, is integrated into the rituals and into the uh, communal life of uh, the, uh, these communities, what I mean is that um, they are doing uh, these rituals and they are organizing these ceremonies um, in person in Tashiyanzi, but they are also extending it in the digital world using uh, Facebook and uh, WeChat and then inviting and allowing uh, people like us who live um, outside uh, these communities to participate digitally and this is going to be the next um, uh, mode of, of Bajrayana practices uh, and I think uh, that's the, that's, that was the reason that I, I thought this forum would have been good to present the findings. Just like how you spoke about um, how this uh, community actually makes a point to ask for donation from people using WeChat or any other social platform, and then how uh, how someone from Timpu is actually able to donate to uh, a community in Tashigang. I think uh, that's an interesting one, and pers in, uh, in my uh, personal opinion, uh, it's actually very good because I'm now I'm, I'm able to actually donate and then help the, the community there. And especially when uh, so someone says, can you please donate or maybe John uh, 200 Shaspala, so can you please send the screenshot? That's interesting, but I'm like, okay, if I'm asked to donate, I will donate. But then that, you know, at the validation uh, that I have donated, so I have to send the screenshot and everything. So in that terms, um, in your personal uh, view or in your personal opinion, do you think this kind of practice uh, is is it good or should I say like bad, especially in terms of all traditional ritual practices? Um, you know, uh, uh, one um, one great um, one great aspect of Bajrayana is that uh, it uh, allows uh, people to pursue any skillful means to attain realization or enlightenment. So unlike, um, unlike the, Theravada, the Theravada tradition, where you had, to be monk, you had to be a monk and then you renounce everything, in the Vajrayana, um, there, are, uh, there are mundane, skillful means that one can resort to, and these are evolving. So um, I think uh, mentioned once that uh, Earlier, uh, we only had um, uh, scriptures to propagate uh, dharma, uh, and he um, uh, he argued that uh, film, for example, uh, is actually uh, another means to propagate uh, vajrayana. And in this uh, era of digital technology, I feel that uh, uh, social networking sites. Uh, as well as the mobile technology can be skillfully used to propagate uh, uh, the uh, Vajrayana. Uh, as long as it is not um, ethically or morally wrong, I don't see um, anything bad with uh, using uh, WeChat or mobile phones to you know, help sustain the practice of Vajrayana. Uh, actually, I feel very good that this is happening. Uh, because I could reconnect to my uh, paternal village in, uh, in Palm Rangshikar, to my maternal village in uh, Radhi, as well as uh, to the extended uh, families that I have in, in Tashi Hangzi and uh, other places around Bhutan, including Lunzi. Uh, and I think uh, this is very good because uh, we are all concerned about the decline of uh, community and uh, religious and spiritual practices in this country which are the bedrock of uh, what makes us uh, a nation. Uh, so it's a very good, uh, very good uh, trend. Uh, and of course, uh, I know it's, it can be a bit 
tiring for people to be invited to every um, WeChat group. Uh, it, 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 it is there. But then uh, you can focus on uh, two, three uh, groups who need you the most. And that's what I do. Some groups, they have even, I think, more than 400 members and each member keeps saying, sending something. Oh, I have a friend who, who is a member of 26 religious groups. So, so <laughs> I'm not... Well, uh, one group <laughs> is too much for me. Yes. See, so you, uh, you said um, you, had, uh, you experimented all this with this, uh, your paternal and the maternal families. And I'm just wondering, you mentioned about, uh, I think the one place you did uh, uh, try your work was in Rubesa. Was there any reason for that? Uh, Ruka. Uh, Ruka, sorry. No, Ruka, Ruka is just my, uh, some sort of an adopted village. Oh. So I, I have been working there uh, initially as a volunteer for Tarayana. But after Tarayana completed that project, I, I, I continued uh, in, uh, engaging with the villagers and, uh, and uh, I helped them uh, build their, um, their community temple as well as uh, sustain or introduce um, uh, some religious uh, uh, activities and uh, regular religious activities and festivals. And I continue to, uh, do, uh, to do that because nobody is doing anyway. Yeah, it's true. Yes. It's so nice how you explained about uh, using these mobile phones and uh, about um, using this WeChat and how you are now uh, staying connected with your maternal, uh, both paternal families and even extended families in Tashigang and all. So what uh, fascinated me more was uh, when, you, when, when you said that um, how these Buddhist ceremonies, even during the presentation, how these Buddhist uh, ceremonies are now being circulated through the phone. Uh, and then, um, and then they believe that uh, if even if they get to attend a rindu that is being conducted in the house through a mobile phone, that is their belief. Can you share more on that? Uh, okay, so um, you know, what happens is uh, during a ritual uh, ceremony, uh, there is uh, a moment or a gap where we believe that the deities are in the presence, uh, in our presence, uh, at, at at the site. And we are supposed to make uh, our wishes and melam uh, during that uh, gap. So what happens is that uh, the um, the lama or uh, someone would uh, announce that that uh, now it's time for us to offer our melam. So members, uh, please uh, take note of this. Take a moment and then you know uh, make your wish. And uh, I, I have uh, photographs as well as testimonials of people joining in. Yes. Uh, the the the, um, the wish uh, you know uh, the, the wishing part um, they would stop their car uh, and uh, you know have their phone in front uh, and and have their uh, picture of the t of the ceremony in front of them and it would make their wish in 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 front of the mobile phone uh, I have um, uh, screenshots of people joining in from as far as the U S as as well as Australia um, and. Uh, and that's the uh, f uh, fascinating part, uh, uh, you know, another topic for, for another academic paper on the materiality of um, the mobile phones uh, in terms of spiritual uh, practices. Uh, but what I was saying was, there are people who take a moment, no matter where they are in the world, to uh, make their melam. Uh, when that uh, ceremony or when at that moment in the ceremony and that is uh, fascinating that's interesting because now uh, thanks to digital technology uh, we are moving beyond the time and space so in other words um, if Thimpu Sechu is happening in the past we had to go to Thimpu Sechu okay uh, but now uh, because of the um, live broadcast uh, which uh, BBS does and the live streaming that, that they do uh, on, on Facebook. Um, we are extending first of all uh, the space of this seju not focused or concentrated only in Thimbu um, Zong but around the country around the world people can join in from anywhere to watch the seju and these are recorded meaning that 50 years down the line we can have we can look at the recordings of the Thimbu Sechu or the ritual uh, back in your in your village. So that's what I meant when I said that we are concurring the time and space uh, in terms of these rituals. So um, it's um, 
when you talked about uh, now that we only talked about the spiritual practices and all, and then how you talked about the statues and everything, I was right now I was just thinking about um, based on your studies as well as what you spoke right now, how how do you prove on when it comes to community vitality, especially because in your presentation presentation I saw about uh, you mentioned about Anderson and then imagine community that thing so how, how does that prove the community vitality among the people okay so um uh, anderson's uh, definition of a nation was as a as a imagined political community in the sense that uh, we come together as a nation or we feel part of a nation and it is imagined because no um, not every member of this political community would meet or know each other but we uh, sort of, uh, we sort of uh, take for granted that we are uh, a part of that nation. Um, now, uh, Anderson's works uh, uh, was mainly um, deduced from uh, what he calls the, the print journalism. So in other words, what he says is, just as, uh, 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 just as two people or, or more would read um, uh, the same news, mm -hmm. that uh, read uh, that uh, act would create a national consciousness. Yes. So um, a person who is reading Quinzel in Tashiangzi or uh, in Jemgang or in Dagana would uh, have the same national consciousness because we are part of a nation called Bhutan. Uh, that same consciousness will not be there uh, as you cross the border. So somebody in Shillong or Jaigong. Or, or in Shiliguri will not have the same national consciousness because it's uh, because we are not part of a same nation, right? So that is the that is the the, the, the theory of uh, imagined communities by Anderson. Uh, now, what I argue is that uh, we need to now extend this in the digital uh, world into the social media uh, because um, uh, the social networking sites are able to bring together a nation um, around uh, an issue or an event and uh, that extension uh, is even more um, uh, powerful because it, uh, it crosses uh, the space and time uh, in the sense that now we can have uh, Bhutanese living in Australia or the US or in the Middle East joining in this national consciousness uh, because of the social media. So, for example, uh, the best example is the community WeChat group uh, called Rangshikar Khunpa. Uh, that is my uh, uh, community temple uh, back in eastern Bhutan. Is actually or was actually initiated by my cousin who lives in New York, and he is the uh, group administrator. So basically, uh, he's been living in the U.S. for the last 10, 15 years, but he is able to bring together our community around Rangshikar Khunpa, you know, around. Uh, and that is uh, fascinating and that is uh, interesting yes so actually I was I was about to ask you about you know how do, how does all these things uh, maintain the emotional link to offset the physical distance uh, created by out migration but I think half of this has already been <laughs> answered by you <laughs> yeah yeah I just wanted to yeah uh, I'll point that out because uh, you know, right now uh, there is a lot of uh, migration out of our villages into the urban towns of uh, Bhutan yeah. and, and then many <laughs> people are out migrating to Australia and, and, and the US. Yes. Now um, uh, I'm not really concerned about the physical distance uh, as long as the emotional link are maintained. Mm -hmm. So as long as I feel close to my deity in, in Tashiyong Zong, uh, as long as my daughters uh, feel connected uh, to their respective uh, temples um, where they were offered to here in Bhutan, uh, I don't think we should be concerned. But if um, they or if we uh, cut off that emotional link, if we cut off that spiritual uh, linkages to our ancestors and uh, to our native places, then I think I, I, would, I would worry. Yeah. So there's one quote um, that I really, uh, I mean, that really grabbed my attention when I was reading your uh, abstract. So th there's one quote, I, I'll just quote. Um, Sacred places are not only powerful sites for spiritual pursuits, but only important social spaces that bring people together. How does one find the community, contentment, and confidence in this? Yes. 
Um, so, um, uh, the, uh, the example that I can give um, is in, uh, in, in Ruka. Um, I know that uh, village, I know every, every person there, I know, I know their relationships, you know. I know who is uh, friends with whom and who are not very friendly with uh, whom. So, um, and on a normal day, uh, people who are, who, are, uh, who, who are friends would, would uh, gather in, rest, in different houses. And uh, people who are not um, friendly or they're not uh, friends will not see each other, right? So that's a, that's a normal uh, thing that we do. But then when it comes to, uh, but for two days every month, we have the Namo Soja, uh, the proposition of uh, ceremony to Pelan Namo at the community temple. What I observe is that everyone comes together. Mm. Everyone uh, comes in, everyone chips in, everyone brings uh, their contributions, uh, mainly in-kind contribution to the tem temple on those two days. So, and uh, I also noticed that some of them even don't enter the temple at all during the whole day. So they will come and then, yeah, they are thinking, if you should, you know, this is what I brought, you know, and then uh, hands it over to the king here or to the Lama. And then they will be hanging around and catching up with, uh, with, their, with uh, those, uh, his friends, or they will start uh, speaking, you know. So this is what I meant by saying that uh, not everyone is pursuing. Um, pursuing uh, realization or enlightenment by, by attending those rituals and ceremonies, but doing it more as a, as a, social, um, a social obligation, you know, uh, to be part of that uh, social fabric that they have, uh, they have brought in. So uh, that's what I, what I argue uh, here is that uh, these places are not only um, sacred spiritual sanctuaries, but also a very important social spaces. Uh, and uh, that's also the reason why I strongly suggest uh, supporting uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, places as well as maintaining uh, these uh, places through some uh, sort of uh, a cultural heritage bill or, or act in, in, in the parliament because at some point we need to uh, codify these, uh, these practices, otherwise we will, we will lose them. Yes, true, that's very true. So in your findings, um, you talked about uh, something called emergence of hybrid communities. So what, what does this actually indicate or interpret? How do we interpret this? Okay, so hybrid community is uh, what I coined uh, as a community that exists in the cyberspace on WeChat, uh, which have both in-person meets as well as, uh, as, well as uh, uh, social uh, networkings on the on the social media, so uh, for example, um, uh, the, there is one uh, community uh, in um, uh, in Jemgang, uh, where I am also a part of, uh, and it, it uh, and that group is around uh, nine hundred um, uh, members. Uh, I go to Jemgang. Uh, I meet uh, the people there. I meet. Uh, our Lama, I interact with, uh, with uh, members, but uh, that uh, in-person meets are very limited. So I don't see, uh, or we don't see all the members coming in uh, there. So, uh, so a hybrid uh, community is, con uh, I guess is constructed because maybe around 20% of the members are meeting face-to-face, -face in person, um, physically, whereas other 800 members are just uh, existing on the, on, on the online space. So they are not necessary. So in Bhutan, especially through WeChat? Yes. yes. Oh, so that's, that's what uh, emergence of hybrid yes. means. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, then one of your, another finding, interesting finding was how you mentioned about the traditional role of women has changed, uh, especially when we, uh, what we call is this Nangi Am, it has been reinstated. So that was one thing where I was not able to relate to your, uh, your findings with the uh, social media and the spiritual practices, I wasn't able to relate to that. What does that actually really meant? Okay, so I'll give you a very, uh, very simple example. Um, uh, in, uh, in Eastern Bhutan, where I was born, um, the eldest sister uh, inherits the family property. Mm -hmm. uh, she yeah. would marry in a husband and then, and then uh, be the Nangyam. Yes. And she would uh, uh, normally uh, be the 
be the be the be the you know uh, be the center, uh, uh, and then uh, you know the coordinating um, agency that you know keeps everyone um, uh, together. Now, um, in the decades after modern education and um, and all these inheritance acts were uh, passed uh, by our national assembly, and then with uh, the so-called modernization. Uh, I noticed that there was a decline, uh, some, there was a, some sort of a decline because uh, new power centers were created, new coordinating bodies were uh, created, and uh, the role of women, uh, as we all know, in, in the communal leadership or the national leadership uh, is not as good as, uh, you know, uh, as compared to the male, male members. So there was uh, some sort of a decline, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would argue. With the WeChat, now what has, what has happened is that uh, it has given a forum to bring together and reinstate that, uh, that position. So um, I noticed that every um, family WeChat group is either led by uh, the, the, a female or the most, uh, most um, prominent female in that uh, clan. Uh, it, it is in my case. My eldest sister is is the is the uh, WeChat administrator for both my uh, my paternal as well as my maternal uh, village group. Uh, but then, when it comes to um, a WeChat community WeChat group or the Geo WeChat group, then I see that the, uh, men are are, 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 the, are the administrators. So this is what I call that. Uh, perhaps there is a re. Uh, Re-emergence or or or, or re-instating uh, of the uh, role of women as the nangi am uh, in the Bhutanese families and clans. So uh, that was one of my one of the findings. So that means uh, there is a little bit of hope for a woman to actually act as a nangi am because basically uh, I think in general what people like to say is that women are very bad with calculation. So you know we we may not uh, if you don't want to have women who's managing everything that so you know, uh, what I'm saying is in terms of math and everything so I think your findings is something interesting where it actually gives women like us a hope that we can also be uh, oh, the nangi am like, for a group yeah, chat. It's, not, it's not really ne necessary <laughs> for people to have all you know uh, financial and economic skills. Yes, uh, exactly. What what uh, we need is a little more care and concern for the clan. You know, I say clan because um, uh, in Bhutan the, the definition of a family is not just your uh, core family, and, uh, and 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 of course another interesting thing is that uh, uh, women can uh, multitask more than that's men, right. and they can reach out to ev ev everyone. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's so. I, I think that is also another very interesting emerging trend in the social media. Uh, last, uh, Dr. Dajanchu, I think uh, because of the time uh, constraints, I would like to ask you a final question. So the final question would be because based on your findings, based on our Vajrayana conference and the themes and all, I would like you to comment on the Vajrayana and digital age or Vajrayana and evolution of Buddhist practice. Um, uh, well, as I said, um, uh, Vajrayana Buddhism is not... Um, limited uh, to the temples and monasteries and uh, to the formalized uh, organization or, or institutions, but it can be practiced um, at, an, at individual levels, at uh, a less informal uh, level. And uh, if uh, uh, there is one thing that we should accept is that uh, digital technology and social networking sites and social media are here to stay uh, for a very long time. So might as well use them to uh, in the service of the Vajrayana. And uh, that uh, is something that uh, I hope uh, forums uh, and conferences such as these uh, would uh, help us understand, make sense, and even imagine um, the Vajrayana practices uh, you know, going forward. And uh, one session that I really liked was uh, Vajrayana uh, practices and the artificial intelligence, yes. something that uh, you know, I look forward to. Something everyone was looking forward to, I think. 
especially in terms of how uh, artificial intelligence is given importance in Bhutan and how His Majesty has stressed over and over that we must evolve and then we must also accept AI and all. I think this, the, the, this session was also a very good one session. Yes. yes. Thank you so much for your time. So I was in conversation with Dr. Dojo Chu and whoever knows Dr. Dojo Chu, they know that they know him as someone who is resourceful and whose actually researches are very useful. So thank you so much to Mr. Dojo Chu who agreed to come here because in, uh, we had a very limited uh, Bhutanese speakers, but he was someone who uh, really care, cares about this evolutions of Buddhist practices. So he agreed to come here. So that's why thank you so much for your time, whether in person, whether through WeChat or whether through various social media platforms, practicing Buddhism is possible in today's digital world.